Hey guys, welcome back to Virtual Vertex. In this video, we're gonna be breaking down and showing you how to create recreate scenes. Uh, specifically for this video, we're gonna be looking at Studio Ghibli's Spirited Away. So specifically for this tutorial guide slash breakdown, I wanted to try and keep everything as basic as possible and avoid using any complex or high level 3D modeling techniques. So without further ado, let's get in and start looking at our concept art and reference images. So as you can see here, we're using my favorite reference program, PureRef. It allows us to keep all of our screenshots and images at full resolution and just easily jump around to different ones. So we're going for a basic kind of look here. In the middle, you can have, I have screenshots from the anime. Unfortunately, the anime doesn't kind of have a full panned out view for that reason I've gone and looked into a concept art piece which we have here and then another key aspect I want to look at is the statue in the middle this little happy guy covered in moss as well as these little stone lanterns hidden on either side of the road so the first thing we're going to want to do is Again, look at what reference we've got and see how we can break that down into actual assets. So, looking at this first, the first main asset will be the road, as it's kind of the direction of your eye in the scene. You follow it down, so I think that's a key part, so that would be one asset. The second would be the building lower wall just below the balcony, which we have here. I'm going to break this down into three modular assets. So we'll have the wall with the door frame, a second wall with this little window ledge indent, and then a third plane flat wall to carry on off to the edge of the scene. And then moving up above that, we will have the balcony itself. Again, it's quite square basic geometry, so it's good for uh, beginners to 3D to can reference what's this and recreate in your preferred 3D program. We'll be using 3ds Max. After the balcony, we you can see we have these windows and sliding doors. I'm going to do this as two separate assets. We'll have one with just the windows and then we'll recreate a second piece which will essentially be the same but with a sliding door where one of the some of the panes are pushed forward so you can see here that will be better represented and then if we go even higher we have this first roof section now the roof section is going to be done in two parts because as we can see here this first section has got less of an angle compared to the upper section in addition to this the lower section doesn't need the topping on the roof above that we also have a fourth and final wall piece here where it's got kind of like archer slits down this in the gaps in the side that's a, a basic model and then last but not least for this building we have the sign itself So overall, that means we're going to be modeling roughly 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 assets to create the building itself. Then obviously we have the road, the little golem statue, and then these. Now the final bit that we're missing is the foliage. For the foliage, we're going to keep it basic. We're going to do the grass, and then we're going to model one tree to go over the basics on how you would create foliage and then we're going to go over using three asset packs as well which is an important because when recreating your scene a lot of new artists get stuck in that they have to model every single asset um, although that you can do that and it's a lot of fun to do it takes a lot of time and for now it's better to focus on what you want to focus on and get better at that. So in this case, we'll be looking at the building and architecture. So now we are inside of the Unreal Engine. Wrong. You can see we've got all of our assets here that I've made and some of them I've broken down so we can go through step by step how we've made them and why we've done them that way. 
so the first thing we're going to look at is the route so if we just select everything we don't want to see and make them invisible for now and then just look at the road so the road if we look at our reference it's just a basic slabs and cobblestones road with moss and grass on top of them now the moss and grass we're gonna apply later on so we're just looking at the mud that would be underneath the slabs and then the slabs themselves and now the first thing you got to think out is how are we going to optimize that So now we're going to look at our concept art and you can see we've, it's a basic cobblestone path with a slight arch to the geometry. So now we're back in engine, we've got to think about how we can create a road with 3D geometry and have it optimized to both save time and run efficiently. So uh, what we've done, we know that we want lots of slabs, so to do that and make it optimized and use less texture space, we've modeled only three. And those three can actually be many more. We have the reverse side as well, so that's essentially six. And then by the time you warp and distort, transform each of the rocks themselves, you have even more variation just from having three basic meshes. Um, that optimizes the texture because each rock then is only using a set amount of texture space. Whereas if you used to unwrap a whole a whole road like this, each each uh, slab of stone would have less design pixels, so you'd have a less detailed texture. And then we've got a two by two uh, meter base as a reference point. <laughs> so now we have some slabs, which are pretty basic geometry. Um, flat, with kind of smooth edges. Then what we want to do now is we want to, like I said, we'll take these that we've got here, duplicate them and transform them till we have this piece here. Now when you're doing this, you want to make sure it tiles. So to do that, I just duplicate up here and we can see it fits nicely with the previous mesh. Same again for the opposite direction and then again to the side. Cool. Then, because we go up to our reference again, we can see the road is a lot longer. So, I'm going to make it a four meter wide mesh model. So, again, I've just dragged the model across, grouped them, and linked them together. And there we have uh, basically what will be our road tile. However, we will then need to group them with their different materials and also as you can see here we've added an F FD modifier uh, what that is essentially is a three-dimensional transform tool so in Photoshop you have transform as 2d this is the essentially the same thing but 3d and if I get a side view you can see we've added a slight curve nothing too crazy but just enough so we can blend it into the terrain on either side of the road itself. And then, like I said, here is the final piece with everything grouped together. And you can see how that would work. So how we can have a nicely detailed road without actually utilizing too many polys or texture space. Now the next thing we want to look at is while well, we're just focusing on asset by asset is texturing the road itself so for the base the brown texture color we can see that's I'm going to use a basic mud texture which you can get from online for free or if you have substance painter uh, you can use substance source within the unreal engine which I will show you how that's done when we get to it so that's we don't have to worry about that However, for the stone, it, we want to be more specific with where the moss sits. So we're going to 
export our original mesh of these three rocks into Substance Painter and texture from there. So I will see you when that's ready. So now as you can see, we've got our slabs inputted into Substance Painter and I'm going to show you what materials I've used to create the textures. So the first thing we've gone with is a concrete simple texture as the base. On top of that, obviously, it's in a old forest and it's not going to be nice and clean. So we've added dirt and we've gone and added a mask on top of that. We can see here and edited. We've adjusted to bring that up. Now we have slabs which look nice but not just right we're in the middle of a forest so the next layer of the texture for these assets we'd need to add is the moss which we can see here and then on the reverse you can't really see right now because of the lighting you can see it's not exactly the same so that means that, like i said when we duplicate twist and transform the meshes it will look like a lot more than just three repeating models um, now when you're in substance painter for bear in mind we're going to export our materials our textures for the unreal engine to do that we want to use the unreal engine packed format and i use tagger and then export to wherever you want your folders saved so now we've gone over how we create the road and pre-planned ahead on how we're going to model it to ensure the textures are optimized. Uh, now we're going to look at the wall of the building itself, uh, specifically the lower wall, which as you can remember, we said we were going to break down into three key components. So as you can see here, we have the doorway, the flat wall itself, and then the flat wall with the window imprint. Now from here, these are all unwrapped, so each end of these mesh will touch the end of the UV texture. So if I open up here, we can see how it's aligned so that it goes from either end. Now this is the same for the other three meshes. And then that way we have a texture that fits in here. It will um, tile across seamlessly. Now, like I said, these walls are super basic. There's not much more to them. Um, we've made sure that we've got rid of any end guns, for example, around the arches. We've gone and connected up all these vertices to optimize the mesh itself. And that's it for that one. Uh, when Now, in addition to ensuring the unwraps are all aligned between them, you can see the uh, point the pivot point we've set oh. okay so addition to ensuring the unwraps are all aligned so we have a seamless transition of textures between the asset we've also gone and set the pivot point to the bottom pixel on each of the single meshes this means when we have the object in engine that we can snap to each point a lot more easily rather than trying to drag around to get it perfect it's set up so that we can snap it on without any hassle now again working our way up the building we will be looking at the balcony section so we've got our road check walls check now we're gonna look at the balcony and see how we can optimize this and make life easier by minimizing the amount of polys and texture space that it would take up. So if we go back to 3ds Max, see I've broken it down. So here we have the frame of the balcony. Again, super basic geometry, mostly just long oblongs with a chamfer on the edge just to smooth it a little. And then just slight deformations just so it's not super straight. Again, for the actual floor, which you don't really see, but we've done it anyway. We've got three simple planks. And then the reason we've done three is so that there's a slight variation. We can again rotate and flip them over so that 
if you do get a view on the pathway balcony itself, it's not clearly repeated textures. So from here, we've gone and mirrored them, uh, mirrored the balcony itself. So we have it here, either side. And then we've gone and placed the planks or boards across the back here. Obviously this is not big enough. We can probably keep it this big. But, um, I just duplicate it over and over again, but we're not going to do that. We're going to leave it how it is so that we can then again mirror it. So we've mirrored it and then we've gone in and adjusted the panels. So there's slight differences in the gap again to break up any in that might seem like it's repeating. And then we've gone and grouped those and that's essentially the balcony done. We've got two materials again. We would have unwrapped this at the first stage and then by the time we get here it's all good and we don't have to worry about it now again these we're not going to throw into substance painter because we want to keep it as basic as we want we're going to find a nice wood material either from substance source or from google images and we'll work with a, a tiled material in the engine The next thing to look at after the balcony will be the squared off windows and the sliding doors just above them as we can see right here. So again if we jump into 3D S 3DS Max this is super simple model so they look the same the only difference being that this one on the side you can see the left eight panes are pushed forward and then you can see that makes it gives it the effect that it's a sliding door again both of these meshes are unwrapped exactly the same all we've done is we've had our first mesh modeled and then we've just gone and selected the faces that we want which would be these ones uh, not these ones and just just detach them uh, push them out and then on the edge, we've just gone and extruded and pulled them back again, just a little bit. Um, unlike the other ones, this one we will need to texture because we want to have the glass to have a specific metallic value compared to the wood. It's not all one flat material. And also in Unreal Engine 10, if you want glass to be transparent, you'd generally have it as a separate material but as we're not it's just going to be a reflective mirror kind of texture that we use so we've gone and unwrapped this like so you can see we've filled in all of the squares to take up as much texture space and make sure none of it's wasted so i will see you inside a substance panel and we'll go over how we'll create a basic material for this one Welcome back to Substance Painter. As you can see, we've got our mesh imported here. We've gone and done just a quick bake so we can get some AO around the frames of the window and glass. So let's start off with the wood. We've gone with a walnut wood and tweaked the color. As we can see, if we open our reference, it's kind of a dark brown. So we've tried to get that as close as we can it's a bit less contrasted than in the reference but it works um go back to the substance painter and then all we've done is add a mask and just clicked out the window paints because we want them to be glass um when added a mask i don't know if you already know this we can go this detail in a future video on how masks work but, um if we click here on the walnut wood we're gonna then use it by frame so we can see when we have a white value that allows the texture to be seen but we want this black there you go now the next thing is to fill these squares with a glass material which substance come with and then again because we did a bake around the AO we've got kind of this grunge effect which is fine it's an old building in the middle of the woods so that's kind of the look that we want 
And then on top of that, the final part is missing is some dirt. Again, Surgeon's Painter has a dirt material. So we've gone and added that in and adjusted the values. So we have a reflective mirror window glass material with mud. And then it will fit into our little Spirited Away forest scene. Again, this was exported the same way as with the slabs, with it the Unreal Pact format. We've now got our window material add mesh done along with the sliding door which uses the same texture. Uh, the next thing we want to look at is the first lot of roof tiles which also means in turn the second lot of roof tiles due to how we're going to model these. So if we go back to 3ds Max and look at our roof tile we can see it's broken down now. All of these wood pieces that we have here are actually utilizing the same mesh that we had in the balcony. The reason for that is it's already unwrapped, one, so we won't have to do that. And then two, when we apply the texture, it will be the same across the whole scene. So we won't have any super weird discrepancies where wood just looks completely out of place. And on top of that, the next thing I've done is broken the roof tiles down into three assets we have the tube and then two tiles you'll probably get away with a few less polys in the tile but we as we've got it curved here it's better to have a few more just to show that extra detail so we've got here nothing too complex so far essentially all we've done oh wait i should mention these have all been unwrapped at this point saving us again from doing it later with a lot more polygons so now we've got all of our parts unwrapped, we've reutilized some meshes from other parts of the scene. I've gone and set up and created the first small roof. You can see we've just duplicated all of the different meshes, we've twisted and angled some of them to tilt. And then that way we have a lot more variation that breaks up anything that looks repeating when we have more than one roof next to each other. As we can see here, it looks fine just breaks it up a little so that's essentially that first roof tile super easy and then again we're gonna move on to the second which is basically a, a duplication of the first one which we can see here we've got this so we know where it will align with the rest of the building and then all we've gone and done is duplicate our tiles upwards uh, re-angling and jiggling some of them around and there we have a, a much bigger roof. On top of that, however, we have this little feature piece. Now I know with this one, we could have gone a few more less polys, should I say. And these arch bits could have been done in the normal map or baked on. Uh, however, we want to keep this simple. So we've done it like this. So we can just slap on the same texture that would be on the rest of the roof tiles. So again, it's super basic. We've got our little capped tiles, the arches from the detail in the reference which we can see here. And then that is essentially that done and all this is just using reused assets other than the tiles so it saves us a lot of time and we don't have to worry about unwrapping more things and we can just focus on the creation process of making something that's going to look good. Again, I should mention with the roof tiles, we're going to just utilize a substance source material. However, if you feel like you want to create your own, you can do, but we're going to use a substance store source material and then we're going to break that up in engine utilizing other meshes and the decal system within the Unreal Engine. So now that's the roof done, the final pieces that we need to look at creating are the sign as well as this smaller wall section behind the sign. So in here we can see we've got the wall, super basic geometry, nothing complex going on. And then again this is unwrapped and in a way that will match the lower walls so we can use the same texture. And then we have the sign itself. Again, it's just a few
few oblong, slightly angled, nothing too complex going on. Um, if we look, we've got these edges here, we've got the edge here, which we've done. This we made when we were modeling this, we had, um, let me get the selection right, here we go. Modeled this flat first to start off with, because it makes life easier. You don't get wonky stuff. We created an end set and we just beveled the edges to get this extrusion around the edge. Again, this is going to use a unique unwrap and be hand textured with the sign. We're going to have to create that. So if we take a look at the unwrap, which is not there. Let's, let's do that again. So if we take a look at the unwrap, which works now. We can see we've got it here with the two main faces taking up the most of the space as that's the prominent part of the texture. So what we're going to do, I'm going to get this exported and then set up in Substance Painter and break down the material that we have there. So we're not in Substance Painter, I have lost the file for the sign. We have technology! Shame on me. I'm just gonna quickly go over it in the Unreal Engine. We can see we have these main beams here, are a concrete material. The sign itself is just a rusted metal and then a height map or is used to add a bit of detail. Obviously in the reference, I have no clue what this sign says because it's barely visible. So I've kind of roughly replicated the shapes with the height map to get a bit of shadow. And then I've purposely exploited the texture in a slightly lower resolution. Again, so it's a bit more blurred. Uh, and the sign, actually what I've textured doesn't say anything specific. So if it's a bit blurry, like it is in the reference material, it doesn't matter. And you can't tell, and it just makes it look old <laughs> and rusty, so we can get away with that. Now we've had the main building and road done, we're going to look at the two main side assets props that we highlighted in the reference material. Those being this little jolly golem man and these little stone little lanterns. Um, so with the statue i essentially modeled a sphere um divided it so we had lots of polys and then i actually dropped it into zbrush and it's super super basic we just engraved his little smiley mouse and just added sculpted on some arms and ridges for the eyes to give it a bit of shape so he looks a bit scary at the moment without any texture but here he is and then to get back into square i just um retopologized it within zbrush um if you want a more specific zbrush tutorial in the future just let me know i uh, will get that done but for now it's super basic make a egg shape drop him into zbrush i think you can get a free one month's trial when you first sign up and then just sculpt away. The other asset we're going to look at is super simple. We have what was the stone little lantern on the side of the road. Again, super basic. We've got a few extra uh, edges in here just to make the tops a bit more uneven, give it a bit more geometry when it's angled and the silhouette. We have more than one. Got a little inset for the inside where you place your candles. And then that's been unwrapped and then added a... We're going to use a basic concrete material as we did with the stones. Hey guys, thanks for watching the first part. In the next episode, we'll be going over foliage, creating grass and going over the basics that you need to know to get that done as well as looking into trees um it won't be a super in-depth look at foliage it's something we can look forward to in the future a more specific episode and then after that 
for the third and final episode we will be looking at unreal engine and input and getting everything set up in there so again remember to like and subscribe to catch the next episode when it drops and i will see you next week